Okay, so you just got a salary bump and that's great, but what's next? Is this A, celebrate big and the next morning look for what lifestyle upgrade you can do next because well, now you can afford it. Or is it B, live the same way you did yesterday? Unfortunately, many of us is very likely to choose option A, whether it be from getting a pay rise from your current job or getting a higher salary from a new job and that is called lifestyle creep, which is when your brain adjusts so very quickly to the new level of disposable income. And as a result, you increase your lifestyle, you upgrade your lifestyle to match that level of income when you have that new lifestyle it is really hard to pair back down to the old lifestyle the cheaper lifestyle that you once had but good news for us there are ways to avoid spending this extra money on the things that are not of value to you and the first thing that you can do with this additional money is to put it in the workplace pension via salary sacrifice so actually I've just got a new job which is a 10% pay rise comparing to my previous job. I'm about to send an email to HR now asking to increase my pension contribution so that the majority of my pay increase will go to my pension pot. Now, if you're full-time employed in the UK, your workplace should offer you a workplace pension scheme. This is called 401k in the US. So it's a similar thing where the employer will deduct certain contributions from your salary and put that into a retirement fund. Now, depending on where you work, of course, but in many cases, the employer will also have a set level of contributions that they will also contribute to your pension fund as well. And for many employers, they will even match your contribution. However, if you don't have an access to a workplace pension, for example, if you're self-employed, you can opt to put this money in a SIP account. Now, a SIP account is the self-invested personal pension, which is a pension account, a pension wrapper that allows you to save, invest, and build up a pot of money that you can use for your retirement. Now, this video is not to talk about which investment option is the best, and so I will rather keep this very brief. However, I do think it is a much better option for you to just spend this extra money on the investment that will eventually grow in the future and you can potentially use it as your retirement fund. I think it's also really important to stay clear on your financial goals. I strongly believe that a major part of achieving something is to have a clear goal and a plan in place. Now we are all very busy human beings and a lot of time we get trapped into day-to-day -day activities, day-to-day -day temptations and financial traps. And it's so easy to lose track of what our big and important goals are, especially when it comes to financial goals. Whether it be saving for three months experience expenses as emergency fund or saving for your first 10k or start investing. Big goals like this will give you a sense of success to focus on rather than just thinking about spending that hard-earned money. Now if you have a high interest debt, for example credit card debt, you might want to use this extra money to pay off this debt by increasing a monthly payment. According to the money charity, a credit card on the average interest would take 24 years and 10 months to repay if you only make legal minimum repayments each month. The minimum repayment in the first month would be £54 but would reduce each month. Now this is where it gets interesting. If £54 were paid every month, the debt would be cleared in around 5 years and 1 month. Wow. Another great way to avoid lifestyle creep is to automate your savings and investment for the extra income that you're earning. Now let's face it, purely relying on our discipline to meet the financial goals is perhaps not the best approach. It is very difficult to avoid doing something when essentially you know you can. Setting up an automate payments or transfer each month to your savings or investment account will make sure that your spending is kept under control. So for example, for example, if you're with your pay rise or your salary bump, you're getting £200 extra every month after tax. Setting a transfer of that £200 into saving is a much better way than have that £200 sitting there in your account and you know that you could spend it. And look, I'm not saying that you can't upgrade your lifestyle at all because at the end of the day, everyone's situation is unique. If you are, for example, a family of four and you're living in a two-bedroom flat, an upgrade to a three-bedroom is 
is probably essential so that your children, each of them do have their own bedrooms. However, if it's just you and your partner and you're living in a one bedroom flat and somehow because of you get a pay rise, you want to upgrade to two bedroom flats, maybe that's a lifestyle creep. And I'm saying this from experience. It's also very important to audit your budget regularly and pay close attention to your budget, especially on certain categories. This is because when you get a bump in salary, it's just so easy to want to overspend on certain things because we want to consume more expensive stuff. We all do just like the finer things in life. So we might opt for drinking a bit of more expensive wine, driving more expensive cars. So in order to avoid the lifestyle creep, it's just basically to keep your spending as is, to keep your budget as is, and basically pretend like the pay increase didn't happen. Another thing we want to avoid is to avoid getting into a new and long-term debt. It is very common to want to reward ourselves with these big achievements by buying more expensive stuff. And sometimes these things, you can pay them in one go. However, a lot of times they will have to go into finance, such as getting new, more expensive car or getting a new kitchen. According to Reuters, in the 12 months to March, 86.5% of new private cars were bought by consumers using finance supplied by the members of finance and leasing association. And according to finder.com, 2.8 million cars were bought on finance in 2018. And on average, the monthly cost of running car on finance is almost £390. And I don't know about you, but for me, £390 a month is quite a big financial commitment. And if you really need to celebrate, you can celebrate small. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know that getting a big promotion, getting a big pay rise or getting a new job with a much higher salary is such a big achievement and definitely calls for a celebration. But the thing is, the celebration doesn't have to be big, but it can be quite a small and meaningful one. You can opt for celebrating modestly right after you get the bump in salary and then continue on with your saving for the rest of the time. I mean a few small infrequent splurges here and there can actually help you focus on reaching your bigger goals while still enjoying your current situation. However, if you really must spend money then I would really encourage you to spend money in yourself. Now I talk a lot about the importance of this in this channel in many videos that the best investment that you can do is to invest in yourself whether it be training or education education, especially on the things that you know that after you get trained, then there is a potential that it can increase your income. I talked about the importance of this in this video right here, where I show you exactly how I increase my income very significantly in a short period of time. I'll see you there.